The Bird That Flew with Stephen by Elizabeth Nowlin, presented by Colorado Chapters of the National Society, Daughters of the American Revolution, with permission by the author's family and illustrated by co-pilot designer. I don't usually fly with birds. Sometimes when I fly on the airplane to visit my grandmother, I see birds out the window, but never on the plane. This time, it was different. My name is Stephen Neal, and we were taking a very special trip to Atlanta, Georgia, to see Aunt Lulu graduate from high school. Aunt Lulu is the only real live teenager I know. She takes me for rides in her car, if I fasten my seatbelt, and she knows a lot of football players. So I was very excited when I heard we were going to fly to her graduation. Mother packed our pajamas in a big suitcase and stuffed things she might need into a red handbag. My father kissed us all goodbye while mother picked up my baby sister, my baby sister's bottle and pink doll, grabbed my brother's football and my toy dog, took my hand and my brother's hand and off we went to the airport. My mother had a lot of things to carry. When we arrived at the airport, I saw a fat yellow parrot flying around and around in slow circles. The bird finally glided down and landed on my head. Parrot feet feel very scratchy in one's hair. Hello, bird, I said. Hello, boy, the parrot answered. Why are you sitting on my head, I asked. Mother had not noticed the bird. And besides, I thought parrots were green. He sure was a heavy bird. I am not green, he said, stretching his wings. I'm yellow, and I'm very good looking, if I must say so myself. But why are you sitting on my head? I did not want to be rude. But most boys do not have birds sitting on their heads. The parrot spoke softly. Maybe no one will notice me in your yellow hair. I need to fly to Atlanta. I will just sit here and everything will be fine. Everyone will think I'm part of your hair. I started to ask why he didn't fly with his own wings. But mother pulled on my hand and we started to board the plane. The gate agent looked at me and stopped mother. Excuse me, lady, he said. Your son seems to have a bird in his hair. Oh, dear, mother sighed. The wind must have really mussed his hair. I can't reach my comb. Suddenly, mother dropped the football and was trying to pick it up while holding my little sister, her bottle and doll, my hand, my brother's hand, my toy dog, and the big red handbag. Mother was too busy to notice the bird. We finally found our seats on the plane and sat down. It is embarrassing to walk through a big airport with a parrot on your head. When do we reach Atlanta, the parrot whispered. I'm hungry and in a hurry. I didn't answer because the flight attendant was looking at me oddly. I knew she had seen the parrot. Mrs. Neal, the flight attendant spoke sternly. Your son is wearing a bird on his head. No, dear, mother said. You see, he's not wearing a hat. Stephen's hair gets messy in the wind, and I'm so busy I can't brush it now. It's all right for little boys to have messy hair sometimes. The flight attendant did not know whether to laugh or cry, so she walked away. Mother gave the baby a bottle, and then she closed her eyes to take a nap. I knew my brother Anthony had seen the parrot, but he wouldn't say anything. If I wanted to wear a parrot, it was all right with him. He is a great older brother, even if he won't go anywhere without his football. After a while, the flight attendant came by and asked if we wanted tea, milk, or bird seed. She was upset. I asked for crackers, and the parrot dropped crumbs all over my head. 
On top of that, everyone on the plane began looking at me. They didn't know what to say. I wanted to hide. How nice, very pleasant. The parrot pecked at a cracker crumb. The last time I flew, it rained the entire trip. This is much better. Do you fly often, I asked. No, only once or twice a year. I stay home, mostly. Now be quiet. The parrot yawned and fell asleep. He felt heavier than ever. I couldn't go to sleep. It's hard to sleep when there's a fat yellow parrot snoring loudly on your head. In a few hours, we arrived in Atlanta. Mother had to gather everything up again, so she was very rushed. The parrot and I just stood around and looked. As the flight attendant passed by, he gave the parrot the last cracker, but he was very ill-mannered. He didn't even thank him. When we entered the passenger terminal, Grandmother and Aunt Lulu were waiting. Grandmother ran to help Mother, and Aunt Lulu looked at me. Hello, Stephen, Aunt Lulu said. Why is that bird in your hair? My goodness, Mother said. His hair couldn't look that bad. Aunt Lulu gave Mother a very funny look. Are we in Atlanta, the parrot asked. Yes, I answered. I turned to Aunt Lulu. He needed a ride. Oh, do you fly often, Aunt Lulu, asked the parrot. Stephen already asked that stupid question, the parrot snapped. Besides, I'm late. I have to go now. He flew up and out the door. Aunt Lulu said it was too bad she didn't have a camera. If there's one thing I've learned from this whole experience, it's that you can't hide a rude yellow parrot in a boy's yellow hair.